There's a famous Hollywood trope that involves a security team or the CIA or cops all standing around some sort of monitor watching security camera footage. Eventually they see whatever it is they're looking for and then when they find it, they pause it and then someone inevitably says, enhance, and then they get closer, but they don't lose resolution. And then they say, enhance, enhance, and they keep getting tighter and tighter, but they never lose resolution. It's ridiculous because that's not how lenses work, but whatever, it makes for good TV. What they're trying to do is get in closer because the wide angle that they have doesn't show them the amount of detail they need to see. The limitation of histograms, as we've already covered, is that they're limited to 200 steps, and no matter how many rows you have in your table or index, you're still only going to get 200 steps. So if I have 2,000 rows or if I have 200 million rows, I'm still going to be limited by those same 200 steps at the maximum. Filtered stats allow you to zoom in and start with just a subset of your data. It allows you to enhance without losing resolution. Let's say that you've got a table that has 200 million distinct values for what would match the range high key in your histogram. Since you're only allowed 200 steps, that means only one out of every one million values will be represented in the histogram. The rest will be mashed in as part of the average in a step somewhere. Let's say that Stack Overflow got really popular and we have 200 million distinct last editor user ID values in our post table. Now you can imagine if we have a histogram that is limited to 200 steps, then only one out of every one million last editor user IDs would be represented in the range high key. The rest of the values would just be part of the steps that fall in between. The problem that we can run into is that there can be huge deviations in the number of rows that match one key versus the average range rows for that step. Say for example, last editor user ID 41079 got really active, and for that you get a number of rows of 500,000, but the average range rows is still 166. Now that's gonna blow up your query plan pretty badly if you're trying to estimate 166 and the actual is 500,000. The whole point of having statistics is for them to be accurate and get good estimates. The way that we can make this plan better is to get filtered stats that get closer to that 41079. Now we can't pick the range high key for the histogram. We're sort of at the mercy of however the stats get created where those high keys end up. But what we can do is zoom in closer so that that 500,000 rows isn't a wash in a pool of a whole bunch of other keys, millions of keys potentially, that have 150 rows each. Let's take a look at filtered stats in action. First thing we're gonna do is free the proc cache. We wanna make sure there's nothing lingering as far as our execution plans go. All right, and we want to create some filtered stats. So what we're gonna do is create a statistic on the post table. We're gonna have the first column be last editor user ID and followed by the post type ID. And because it's a filtered stat, it needs a where clause. So the where clause we're going to put on this one is where post type ID equals two. We'll go ahead and create that. Should only take a second, there we go. And now we want to list out our stats to make sure that we're actually going to hit something when we run our queries. And yep, there we go. There is our new stat. And you'll notice one of these things is not like the other. The new stat has a filter definition. This is just the where clause thrown into this column here. And now that we've seen that, we are, oh, one other thing I'll point out coming up here is in the show statistics. We'll look at the histogram and the header. Now, for the first time, we're seeing a difference between unfiltered rows, this is the number of rows in the table, and the number of rows in our stat. Pretty exciting. 
This is 10 million rows out of the 15.9 million rows that have a post type ID of two. And just like a multi-column stat, we've got a progression of the columns involved and their respective all densities. Now last editor user ID is gonna narrow it down quite a bit. So there's really not any change between that and that plus post type ID. Down here in the histogram, because last editor user ID is our leading column, that's what the histogram will apply to. There's our familiar 41071, and our EQ rows is 1120.736. File that number away mentally, we're gonna be hitting it quite a bit here coming up, 1120.736. Okay, so the first thing we're gonna do is check out the old cardinality estimator, and when you run queries with the old CE, you can run a couple of trace flags to go along with them that will return the stats that were loaded and then output those to the messages tabs. To load the stats, it's trace flag 9204. To show the stats, it's 3604. So we'll run this query. It's just select ID from post where post type ID equals two, last editor user ID 41071. We'll run this. And we can see that yes, our filtered stats were in fact loaded and we're looking at last editor user ID and here's the expression that it's comparing against post ID equals two. We'll flip over to the execution plan and see how many rows we got estimated. So the actual number of rows is 1116. The estimated number of rows is exactly what we saw in the histogram, 1120.74. Round it up anyway. All right, so, so far so good. Let's check out the new cardinality estimator. And those trace flags don't work with the new CE, so I'm just gonna leave them out. It's more of a curiosity thing than anything else. We'll go over to the execution plan, check this one out. All right, actual still the same, 1116. The estimated number of rows, same story, 1120.74. This makes sense. The two estimators work the same way when it comes to a filtered stat that uses just literal values like this. We're not using any sort of parameters. Okay, what we're gonna do is create a stored proc called please use my stats. And it's got two variables, post type ID and last editor user ID. We're going to pass in these variables at runtime. So we'll create this procedure. Oh, there already is one. I guess I would have been better off leaving that as altered. All right, there we go. And then what's the row estimate here? We're gonna pass in two and 41071. We're hoping to get that same 1120.74. That's kind of our best case scenario. What have we got? Oh, that's not good. We've got 2857.53, yeesh, okay. What happened? It didn't use a filtered stat. And of course you can read the comments there, but I'll just tell you the reason why is when this procedure is run, SQL Server wants to reuse that plan. And if it's going to reuse that plan, it can't count on the values that are coming in matching the filtered stat, so it can't count on using the filtered stat at all. All right, so how can we work around this? We could tell it to not reuse the plan to do it fresh every time. So let's try that. I'm gonna alter this so that I've got the option recompile here at the end and we'll see what happens. We'll run this again. All right, did we get it? We did, we got our 1120.74. Now, it's up to you whether or not you wanna to go to the length of having this option recompile in there. Um, every time that you run this query, you're going to have to go through the overhead of recompiling it, and that may not be worth the trouble. It seems like a lot of extra effort just to make sure that the filtered stack gets used. So what can we do instead? There is one thing that we can do rather than recompiling. And that is if you have a value that you know is going to be frequently passed in, 
like for example, this post type ID equals two, the two correlates to answers. So if you're passing in post type ID two, you're looking for answers. What you could do then is change this procedure to use the two as a literal, basically hard code it. And please use my stats becomes more of a please show me answers. So we'll alter this procedure. We're going to change that post type ID to a literal value and remove it as a parameter. So I'll run that again and then I'll run my procedure. And all I'm doing is passing in the last editor user ID this time. It's already built into the query that I'm going to be getting answers only. And there we go. There's our estimated number of rows. We're back to the 1120.74. So we've seen that the filtered stats do have some value. And in this case, they were really pretty accurate. The estimated number of rows is 1120. The actual is 1116. It's tough to get closer to the mark than that. But the trouble is we saw that we either had to recompile our procedure every time, or we had to use a literal value in order to get the filtered stat to take. Is this worth the effort? Kind of seems unlikely that it would be, but there are times here and there where this may come in handy that you need to get a very accurate estimate and this is the way to do it. It's the kind of thing that you want to use cautiously and use sparingly. Filtered stats can be very useful, but there are a few limitations you need to be aware of beyond what we've already covered. First, filtered stats don't order themselves the way that multi-column stats do. Recall that the cardinality estimator will take all of the columns in your multi-column statistic, and when producing the formula for the estimated number of rows, it will order them from most to least selective. Filtered stats don't do that. They will go based on whatever the first column is in your statistic. Now with post type ID leading your filtered stat and last editor user ID behind, we'll get a different number than we would with last editor user ID in front, the more selective of the two, and post type ID following that. So the order here actually does matter even more than the multi-column stats order would have. Another thing to be aware of is that filtered stats will block schema changes on the column that the stat is on. So if you have a filtered statistic on last editor user ID, and then you realize you're running out of room and need to change it from an int to a big int, you're gonna get a nasty red message from Management Studio saying, uh-uh, can't allow that. To be clear, we would much rather be doing work against filtered indexes than filtered statistics in most cases. Good estimates are only going to get us so far, and if we're doing clustered index scans like we were in our sample queries, then we're not gonna be much better off. The time where you would want to use filtered stats instead of a filtered index is, say, on a very large table where index creation and maintenance just isn't feasible. There's too much overhead involved and it's too slow. Statistics, being a much more lightweight object, are something that you can manage to create and maintain. One more thing that you need to be aware of when working with filtered stats is that they can get out of date badly very fast. For statistics to update automatically, SQL Server needs to detect 20% of the rows plus 500 more changing in the table that underlies your statistics. If you don't hit this threshold, then the stats don't update. Now you can imagine with a table of 15.9 million rows like our post table has, it would take over 3 million rows changing in order for these stats to get updated. With a filtered stat, you may be focused on a subset of data that is much, much smaller than that. And if there's a table update that, say, updates 1 million rows, it may impact the data in your filtered stat disproportionately. It could be that everything in your filtered stat has changed, but because the table as a whole hasn't changed enough, your stats won't get updated. We'll talk about mitigating this problem along with how to update stats in the most efficient manner possible when we get into how to get good estimates. Now we're going to turn our attention to a problem that has plagued SQL Server for many years, 
and only with the new cardinality estimator do we finally get some relief. It's called the ascending key problem. That's what we'll look at next.